Hi, Andy Homley again. So this time I'm going to talk about the Maserati of uh, exterior framing systems. So this is what we call the uh, Homley Pedley Perfect Envelope. The idea actually came from Joe Vestibrick, who's a building scientist who created the term the Perfect Envelope, where he discussed where insulation should really be in a home. And the reality is it should not be inside the walls, but outside the walls, okay? And the reason for that is, is twofold. One is that when you put insulation on outside of the home, what it does is it keeps the structure of the home completely within the thermal envelope. So imagine now here in a typical home where if it's zero degrees outside, it's probably gonna be about 10 degrees on this edge of the two by four and 75 degrees on this edge of the two by four, okay? So when a material gets hot, it expands and when it gets cold, it contracts. So imagine now there's a 60, 70 degree shift from one side to the other, that two by four is in a major bind, right? It's really all jammed up. And then the same thing happens in reverse when you go to the summertime where the sun might make this 130 and 70 and it puts it in a jam. When you come over here and you put the insulation on the outside of the wall, okay, now on a zero degree day, it might be 55, 60 right here on this side and 70 over here. So what it does is it, it keeps this not in stress, right? So the structure of the entire home stays in a, in a state of equilibrium, much, much better for the home. In addition, what happens is in the winter time is when it's zero degrees outside, the backside of the sheeting is zero degrees. When the humid air of you take a shower or the kitchen migrates into the wall and hits the backside of the siding, it has to condense, right? Because the laws of physics, that it'll condense. So you get water inside your wall. That occurs in 99% of all homes every winter in Kansas City. Now, luckily, the homes usually are so poorly insulated that the wind blows and it dries it out, and that helps. But you still get mold that forms on the insulation, and it's just not good. And that's what you have in most homes, and people have just accepted that. When you have insulation on the outside, what happens is, because this board stays at, say, 60 degrees plus, if any humid air were to get to the back side of that, it can't condense. So it keeps water outside of the walls. In addition, because we do foam on the inside of the walls, it keeps that moist air from ever migrating to that point too. That's why that's not critical to have because if you do a foam system, it keeps the air from getting there, but it just makes it so much better because for sure water will never get in the walls and the structure of the home is within the thermal envelope. I did this on my particular home and the uh, building scientists have said it, it should last three to 400 years, which is kind of fun to think of. Um, in addition, what we do is we put a rain screen on the outside, which uh, here's an example. We use Hardy Siding, one of our, our favorite products. But instead of putting the Hardy Siding right on the foam, there's a gap right here, right? And that's called a rain screen. And what it does is when rain hits the siding and normally it's driven into the wall, it now goes through the siding, but then can air out and drip down. Now to add to the perfect wall system that Joe LeSteber came up with, my framer Mike Pedley and I, that's how we, we got that name, came up with the idea to take this all the way around the entire structure. So now this home in particular has essentially an igloo cooler wrapped around the whole thing, plus a three quarter inch air gap all the way around the whole thing. So if any water gets through the siding or the initial roofing, it'll just dry out. And then at the top, there's a ridge vent, which doesn't vent the attic, it actually vents the air gap that goes all the way around. So it creates a, a structure that should last many lifetimes.